Dear viewers, I am Dr. Adil Riyaz, Consultant Radiologist at Elias Medicare and Diagnostic Center. Today we are here another episode of our ultrasound training course. Now we are going to start a new region. Many of my uh, viewers have uh, requested me that uh, now we should start with the pelvic ultrasound. So now from this episode onward, we are going to study the female pelvic organs and uh, going to study how to perform a pelvic ultrasound. In this episode, we are going to cover a little bit of theory and the techniques. And in the coming episodes, we will be uh, moving toward the practical points. So talking about the pelvis, the female pelvis uh, has uterus and ovaries. And uh, as I have discussed in my first episode of ultrasound training course, that for a radiologist, the worst enemy to visualize any structure is the gas. And this gas comes from the bowel. So, uterus and ovaries are uh, lying posterior to the bladder and bowel, yes, bowel is coming in front of them in the normal uh, anatomical position. So, uterus and ovaries cannot be visualized until unless there is bowel in front of the uterus and ovaries. So, the first target to visualize the uterus and ovaries is that we have to dislodge the bowel from the front of the uterus and ovaries. What we will do for the purpose? We know that the best friend of a uh, radiologist is fluid. We love fluid. We can see through the, the fluid. The fluid gives us a wonderful window to visualize any structure. So to perform the pelvic ultrasound, the basic prerequisite is that the bladder of the patient should be filled appropriately. And I'm using the word appropriately. So it should not be over distended and it should not be under distended. When the urinary bladder will be appropriately filled, it will lift the veil which uh, gut uh, and bowel gases are uh, uh, falling in front of the uterus and ovaries. So it will act as a window through which we will be able to visualize the uterus and ovaries. So it is a first prerequisite that the bladder should be adequately filled. Secondly, the uterus and ovaries, uh, I uh, will discuss some basic anatomy. So before moving to the ultrasound machine, let's discuss it on the whiteboard. So let's move toward the whiteboard. So let's first discuss a little bit of basic anatomy. This is the uterus and the uterus is consisting of three parts. It is having the endometrial cavity which I am representing by the red line and it is having a muscular wall and that is the myometrium. This is the myometrium and then there is the outer covering that is the perimetrium. So from uteruses are arising two fallopian tubes which are reaching up to the ovaries on the both sides. The ovaries are uh, um, almond shaped structures. Uh, we have to visualize uh, uterus and both ovaries while performing the uh, abdomen, uh, sorry, pelvic ultrasound. And if uh, we have to make sure that we can visualize all the parts of the uterus. If I'm going to miss the fundus, it is not okay. And if I'm going to miss the cervical region, it will be not a good study. Then basically fallopian tubes I cannot see on the ultrasound until unless they are uh, filled with fluid that is we call hydrosalpings. So if the tubes have any pathology, I might be able to visualize them. But otherwise on the normal pelvic ultrasound, I will not be able to visualize the tubes. So we are going to skip the tubes. So now coming to the ovary, both ovaries are ov uh, oval shaped or almond shaped structures. And uh, the, these can have uh, variable echogenicities on the ultrasound. These can be from uh, hypoechoic to a little bit uh, uh, echogenic uh, in texture. And uh, depending upon the menstrual phase, they can have um, antral follicles and uh, the dominant follicles, developing follicles. We will discuss all these things in the detail. And then they can have a lot of pathologies which we will be covering from time to time. So I will start from the uterus. The endometrium will appear. What will be the appearance of the endometrium? It also depends upon the menstrual phase in which the female is. Uh, during the uh, mid-cycle, the endometrium gives a trilaminar appearance. 
it will appear as three lines with the central anechoic component. Just like this, it will be giving a trilaminar appearance. This is the normal appearance. In this case, when we are measuring the endometrial thickness, we will skip the central fluid filled part. Then, what pathologies can endometrium have? Here, uh, you can see endometrial hyperplasia, endometrial CA, endometrial uh, polyps, and uh, many other things. Anyhow, so the normal appearance of the endometrium will be like an echogenic line. And in the trilaminar, uh, trilaminar appearance, I have told you the um, myometrium will appear as a relatively hypoechoic structure as I have uh, uh, shown it in the uh, black lines. It will appear gray, rather relatively grayer in uh, appearance. And uh, the um, myometrium can um, have different pathologies like uh, endometrial fi like fibroids. There are myometrial fibroids, uh, there could be an invasion, there can be an AV malformation, then there could be any uh, focal hyperplasia or adenomyosis. Then outer layer of the uterus. The outer layer of the uterus has very few pathologies which will be involving it. Uh, most of the time you will only see um, sub serosal fibroids and that's it. Now the ovaries, the ovaries can show you different pathologies like um, uh, the first thing about the ovaries is the ovarian volume. What is the normal ovarian volume? In a nullie paris woman, the upper limit of the ovarian volume is around 10 ml and in a paris woman, the upper limit of the ovarian volume is around 15 ml. So if we are uh, having uh, uh, our ovarian volume more than 10 ml in a nullie paris and more than 15 ml in a multi paris woman then we should be considering the fact that uh, it may be a sign of the polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, because on maybe on transfer abdominal ultrasound we will not be able to see the polycystic ovaries but uh, the increased volume signifies it. So what else we can see in the ovaries? We can see cysts, there can be endometriomas, there can be uh, malignancies, then there can be um, uh, and the different kind of um, then uh, there can be various uh, kind of uh, CAs and uh, in this uh, uh, pelvic ultrasound we are also going to learn how to perform a complete uh, uh, classification of the CA ovaries and the CA uh, endometrium so all these structures we are the most important thing i'm again going to emphasize is that all these structures are only visible when we are looking it through the window and what window is that that window is urinary bladder until unless urinary bladder is not filled there is a veil in front of the uterus and ovaries and you cannot see uterus and ovaries you have to lift up this veil by filling the urinary bladder if the urinary bladder is not filled there is no study of the pelvics. So in this episode, we have discussed a little bit basics about the pelvic ultrasound. And in the coming episode, we are going back to our ultrasound machine and we will be um, showing you how to maneuver the probe and how to um, how the uterus will appear in an uh, underfilled urinary bladder and how it will appear in, a, in the same subject in the properly filled urinary bladder and then how it will appear in an overfilled urinary bladder. It will be the one of the most important things to know and I will focus it, uh, this whole uh, subject on the same uh, object. So till that episode, thank you so much. I want, uh, I will be appreciating your feedback a lot. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Your feedback is very important. Do let me know what else you want to learn and uh, our next episode will be having a direction uh, in the light of your feedback. Thank you so much. Allah.